Yes, people, welcome back to 1894 for a brand new video. Now, with the arrival of Julian Alvarez and the potential arrival of Erling Haaland or another striker, um, I think it's only right we have the conversation about who makes way for these guys. We have so many attacking options in the team right now. You look at Mares, Sterling, Foden, Grealish, um, and Jesus, of course. Is it okay to have this many players, attacking players, in the squad while bringing in two more? I don't think it is, Joe. I think there is going to be... Ha there is going to have to be someone or maybe two possibly that have to make way for these players. Yeah, I mean, you can't bring in two attacking players. You can't really bring two players into an already, like, established squad where you're stacked. Like, we have so many attacking options in so many different areas. You can't bring in two more and expect the people who aren't getting enough game time already to be completely happy with that, to have their game time reduced even more. Like, it gets to a point now where... Obviously, I think we've asked the question before of we've had, obviously, Jesus, Sterling and Mares. They all have sort of a year and a half left on their contracts. You'd think that one of them would have to go anyway, realistically, because, you know, where would they all fit into the side? But with, you know, one player guaranteed coming in and another one, you know, set to come in, one of them definitely has to move on, like, without doubt. I know we talk about having such a good squad and having players who are willing to sit on the bench and just bide their time and wait for the opportunity and take it when they get it, but they're not going to get that opportunity anymore come the summer with, you know, two arrivals. They're just not. And look, it's always, you know, a little bit disappointing, a little bit sad when you have to let a player go who's been at the club for a few years, but sometimes there is no other option. and. Obviously, there's a couple of different players that you could name that could move on. It's just about, you know, who? Who do you move on? Who actually, you know, could potentially move on? Is there players that p other clubs actually want? Like, it's not a case of, you know, us getting rid of them. It's other clubs being able to afford and actually wanting to sign them as well. Yeah, the two players that initially come to mind, you mentioned briefly there, are Sterling and Jesus. Now, with regards to Sterling, there has been a lot of conversation over where his future lies in the last sort of 12 months because, you know, he went through that long period where he was getting absolutely no football. Now, recently, he has found a bit of form. Granted, he didn't feature in the Manchester Derby, he didn't feature against Palace. Pep clearly still doesn't favour him for these massive moments. So maybe is Pep starting to think it would be OK to let Sterling go somewhere else for the right price uh, and I'm bringing in Alvarez. But the person who I think would be almost nailed on to go, and this may upset a few people, but I think he is almost nailed on to go, is Gabriel Jesus. Now, we've had Gabriel Jesus for a long time, you have to bear in mind, even though, you know, we've, we've all been waiting for the time where he eclipses our striker and becomes the main man up front. He never really grabbed that, did he? He never really took that role. He didn't score enough goals, let's be honest, uh, as a striker. Yes, he would come up with good goals and he'd score nice-looking goals, but in terms of being clinical and being there in the big moments and consistency, that was Jesus' problem, was consistency. Not doing it week in, week out when we've had players like Aguero who would. Then you move Jesus out to the wing this season. Granted, he looks a lot better, but he's still not good enough to take the place of Mares or Foden and Pep clearly wants to give Greenish more opportunities naturally after just signing him for 100 million so uh, unfortunately for Jesus my opinion right now is that his race is run and I know he's in the middle of uh, or big clubs like Inter Milan and Atletico Madrid are, are looking at him and I think I have said this for a while that I think he would flourish in the Serie A or La Liga it's just unfortunate that playing for the Premier League champions who are looking to bring in top quality and keep refreshing the squad I mean Haaland if he is to come in will be an instant starter. There's no question mark over that. He'd be an instant starter. And Alvarez probably becomes the new Jesus of being second choice, but is constantly growing and developing and learning, waiting for when he becomes the main guy. They're both really young. I think it's just it's just time now for Jesus. His time, his time is probably up. Joe, would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, no, I look at the, the numbers that we have in the squad. And for me personally, I think having two players per position um, is ideal really and you look at the wings like he's not getting in up front because he's just plainly and simply he's not good enough i'd rather have a false nine than him up front because he's just not good enough there uh, and obviously you look at alvarez and potentially harland coming in he gets nowhere near there on the right does he get in i'd rather have sterling and i'd rather have mares on the left i'd rather have Foden and grealish at the moment like there's no place that he really fits in and look i look at his age i'm looking at his age he's 24 he'll be 25 
in April. So in a few weeks, it'll be 25. How better, how much better is he going to get? I think I said this in the stream with with uh, the, all the Haaland stuff. How better is he going to get? Is he actually going to, you know, improve as a footballer at all? For me, I think, no, I don't think he can get much better. You know, can he improve abroad, on his maybe. finishing? Abroad maybe. abroad, maybe. Abroad, maybe, yeah, but he's not going to get the football to, like, consistent minutes here to improve and, you know... His biggest worry for me was always his finishing, his composure. And, you know, I suppose it doesn't matter when you have a striker. But again, at the same time, like, his race is just unfortunately run. You've got to remember, again, something else I said in that Haaland stream. The thing with Sterling is he does so much off the pitch. He's homegrown. We need homegrown players to fill the squad. We can't afford to just let English players walk especially when we're signing two foreign players. So for me, Jesus is the obvious one that bites the bullet. And look, he's the only one that seems to have any interest in him as well. I know there's been like PSG and I think Barcelona sniffing around Mares, but Mares just wants to say, like, I think he said he wants to stay. But like Jesus is just, he's been linked away so many times and... For me, for me, it's done. For me, the chapter's closed. He's had his chance up front. He didn't really fit there. He's had his chance out wide, and other players have just eclipsed him, and I don't see a way back from here. Yeah, look, you have to bear in mind, Pep was essentially forced to play this false nine system. He really was. When when Aguero had his, his, his long-term injury problems, Pep had to develop a new way in which we could be threatening and score goals. Uh, and he developed this false nine system where he plays Foden, Bernardo, Grealish, De Bruyne, all sorts. The fact of the matter is Jesus was originally a striker. He was brought in to be a striker and to ultimately take the throne, take the crown, if you like, off Aguero. If if Jesus was good enough and Pep really believed in him, we wouldn't have seen the false nine system, or we would have seen it, but not as much. It wouldn't have become our usual way of play. Jesus would, would have been the talisman up front, and he just hasn't done that. So you can see why Pep is maybe a little bit disappointed and feels the need to bring in Alvarez. I don't think we would be bringing in Alvarez if Jesus was you know, 5 10 15% better. We would probably still see Haaland come in, or Kane, or whoever the big striker that comes in is. But Jesus would still be more important to the team, so I can understand why Alvarez was brought in. He's going to be the new Jesus, if you like, the development player or player that you know you, you find room for him in the system and, and develop him into a player that Pep likes. But yeah, unfortunately for me, the answer is Jesus. Uh, and there's maybe a little question mark over Sterling, but you made some good points over him being homegrown and he's a leader in the dressing room. And he, he does have big moments in him in Sterling. in Sterling. He is a really, really good player who I think still could possibly have a future. But for Jesus, like we both agree, I think his race is run. Let us know your thoughts down below in the comments on Jesus, on, on Sterling, on other players. Uh, and is there, uh, who makes room essentially for these players? Because it just doesn't make sense financially um, playing time-wise to have this many attacks and outlets all in the squad at once would you also please leave a like on the video it helps us massively and subscribe if you're new as well we've just passed 2,000 subs we're on the road to 2.5k get involved hit the subscribe button hit the notifications bell all that good stuff and we'll see you very soon with another video good night god bless